Okay, uh, today I got something kind of fun for you. Um, something a little different. Uh, it's not really like a record review, but just kind of a going over because it's uh, something I, I find kind of interesting. Um, uh, one of the things we've been doing uh, during our imposed coronavirus uh, seclusion, we've, like I said, I have to work from home or me, been laid off from work while work's been shut down, is, you know, we've been doing things around the house and errands and such and, you know, fixing stuff and all the list of things you say you're going to get to and you have time and well, now you have time so you get to it. So one of the things we started doing is cleaning up a lot of these old records we have bought, uh, various estate sales and things. And um, this is one my now fiance picked up a while ago. I think we got it for a couple bucks, like two or three dollars. And it's a box or box set. I mean, it's an old uh, compilation of the Glenn Miller uh, Army Air Force Band. Now, me, I know absolutely nothing really about Glenn Miller. I know really nothing about big band or swing. I don't know really much about any of this kind of stuff. and never was anything I really ever listened to. So this was kind of like the first real times I've ever listened to a lot of this kind of music. And actually, it's, it's surprisingly good. Because I guess, in my mind, a lot of this stuff was like Lawrence Welk. Like, I don't know if you ever watched the show when you were a kid. Um, but that's what I always kind of thought big band and stuff was, was, you know, like Lawrence Welk, just real kind of soft, kind of adult contemporary kind of music. But this is a lot more, um, I guess we'll say rocking. Uh, I guess this is like swing and big band. So you see like, uh, kind of like in the movies when you watch like an old war movie or something and they have like that dance scene. It would be kind of like that. And, uh, and it's kind of fascinating because again, I did not know this, but Glenn Miller was extremely extremely popular in his day. Uh, they said, I uh, looked up on Wikipedia, that in uh, four years, like 1938 to 1942, he had some ridiculous amount of uh, like top 10 hits. It was like 38 and like 16 number ones, which is like more, I think, top 10s than either the Beatles or Elvis had in their career. And he did that in like four years. So it's kind of amazing. And so this is uh, from the years when he had formed his Army Air Force Band. This is during the war years. So, I won't go through everything here. I mean, if uh, you could probably go back and, you know, if you really wanted to, you could probably stop and read some of this stuff. But it basically just talks about kind of his history and the history of the band and where they played. And it's got some cool pictures. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty fascinating. And like I said, it's, uh, again, I don't know very much about this type of music. But, I mean, they go, I mean, from, like, you know, songs that wouldn't be too out of place today, really, in terms of the speed. I mean, I mean, some of it's, like, a real fast kind of beat, and some of it's kind of, like, uh, I don't know, um, ballads and things, like, real kind of soft. And you get that real, again, like, 40s kind of wartime ballads when you hear, like, the, like something like the Andrews Sisters, I guess, would, like, sing in. But it's pretty cool. And this um, was all recorded... Uh, previously to when they went overseas because they were in Europe um, during the war and uh, but this was all recorded previously to them going to Europe so you see like some of these other pictures here it's Mr. Miller himself so yeah it's uh it's just it's again it's kind of like a fascinating glimpse into uh, a past and again a musical thing and a theme again I don't know anything about at least my fiance does she's much more into this kind of music uh, the great American songbook all that kind of stuff that I I said no pretty much nothing about so this is definitely more in her realm but I just thought it was kind of interesting and uh, like I said I mean we got this it's a five record set and we picked it up for I said I think it was like two or three dollars probably actually it was like 250 so, sorry, some of these. So, here, I'll just read this one for you. Uh, the records. The music in this album is taken with a couple of exceptions from our reference recordings from the NBC I Sustain the Wings radio series. Some are from the actual broadcasts themselves, while others are from the dress rehearsals of those broadcasts. Um, every effort is made to include the best performances available, so if now and then you may hear an extraneous sound, such as somebody coughing or a chair being kicked, Bear with it and remember that this is still the best available performance of this particular selection. Uh, they go on to talk about some uh, audience noise creeped in, some live performances and things. But still, I mean, that's pretty cool. Like, uh, I mean, you see like some of the songs like uh, Over There, um, Peggy the Pinup Girl, I like that title. Um, again, I don't really know. I mean, some of these may be super popular, some maybe not. I don't really know. They got like the Anvil Chorus. 
Stardust, which um, I was only familiar with because Willie Nelson did it. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, Pearls on Velvet. Uh, There'll be a hot time in the town of Berlin, which features the clarinet solo by Peanuts Hucko, which is a pretty fantastic name. Uh, and other ones like What You Do in the Infantry, Mission to Moscow. Um, let's see what we got here. Long Go and Far Away, almost like Star Wars. Uh, here we go again. Jukebox, Saturday Night, Blues in My Heart, Jeep Jockey Jump. That's another good one. Uh, St. Louis Blues, The Victory Polka. Um, suddenly It's Spring, Everybody Loves My Baby, uh, Absent Minded. Uh, I Got Sixpence, uh, Tail End Charlie, and then my, one of my favorites, and one of the few songs I actually didn't know, if you look at that last one, Pistol Packin' Mama. Always a good one. So yeah, so like I said, we got uh, this record cleaner, and so basically it's uh, it just uses water and soap, which actually I might even do a video on that one. So we just, like I said, we, you know, did the records, and you can see, I mean, these look pretty much brand new, and these are from 55. I mean, some of them got a few little dings and stuff in them from age, but, I mean, you know, for records that are, you know, 60-some-odd years old, they still look and play pretty fantastic. And, and so for me, it was really, you know, quite the education in a style of music I didn't know for only a few dollars, and I guess that's kind of the magic thing of records. Is that, uh, as you can see here, it's just uh, there, Glenn Miller, RCA Victor, LPT6702. It's kind of fascinating. Again, for a few bucks, you get to listen to hours of music, and it's all fantastic. And it's, and it's uh, you know, songs and things I'm not real familiar with, but there are some that you kind of hear, and it's like, oh, like Stardust. I know that, you know, Willie Nelson did it, but it's not a Willie Nelson song, so... Anyway, it's kind of fascinating, and we got a bunch of these, and I might do more of this kind of stuff, just kind of the, you know, maybe, you know, people out there aren't as familiar with a lot of these things like me, and, you know, it's kind of all new to them. And again, you can go on YouTube, there's a lot of his videos, performances, and things on there. Um, it's pretty fascinating, but, you know, if, if you're interested at all, I would say this is a great start. Just, if you find something like this, pick it up, I mean... I said, I love it. We've been listening to it like almost every day for like a week now. So anyway, uh, the Glenn Miller Army Air Force Band box set. Five LPs, uh, 10 sides of big band and swing from 19, I think like late 30s, early 40s. So anyway, that's it for today. Thanks. Bye.